you do belong here, you are smart, you are intelligent, everybody has trouble sometimes, and just being confident and communicating and trying to get your needs met is the most important thing in being a 16. My third year, I decided um, I wanted to try out CS. Um, so I took 171, and I liked it. So I basically switched my major during my junior year of college, which is not recommended, but I'm doing it, and I'm doing the BS. And um, yeah, it's definitely doable. <laughs> I always knew I wanted to do something that was related to science or math or engineering, something related to that. Uh, I didn't really know anything about computer science as a field, though, so I not until I came to college. So when I got to the U of R, I decided to take 170, thinking, oh, you know, I might turn this into a minor or something. Uh, but I really liked it and decided to major. At the time, my father came with me for the, you know, the orientation and things, and you've got to say which major you're going to pick, right? Mm -hmm. And he kept saying, no, it's computer science, it's computer science. It's computer science. I think it was electronics. So that's what I did, and at the, during my first year, I did do some computing classes. I did, you know, programming, uh, introduction to programming course, and at that time, it was punch cards, and uh, there was a, I mean, although it was interesting, there was a lot by rote, and I think I did a data structures course, and whoever instructed me didn't inspire me to decide to switch, so I continued in electronics for a while. <laughs> No, so I initially came here to do studio art and math, but throughout the course of my time here, I discovered computer science, and I realized that combining studio art and computer science would allow me to pursue a career in UX design. Mm -hmm. like, computer science seemed kind of cool. Um, the logic of building um, everything, it was like, Seemed kind of cool, but I would I would like confess that I didn't know what I was getting into <laughs> until I actually started. It was like a happy accident. So the David T. Kern Center, our mission is transforming lives through educational opportunities. So what that means is that we support first generation college students, low income students, and students of color across the educational pipeline. So while here at the University of Rochester, uh, I found a lot of support in things like the Kern Center and then OMSA, which stands for Office of Minority Student Affairs. Um, through that, you get like resources and advising. Um, hey, if someone who could really relate, like if you're a first gen, Kern is really great for that. Or if you're a minority, OMSA is really great for that. And you have specific targeted support. Um, they give you funding for things like textbooks to classes to housing, which is super helpful. And I think more important than that, you get community. So you meet other people like you, other minority students, other first-gen students in your major who can, who've been there, who've done what you're doing. Through my time here at the University of Rochester, I've been able to take advantage of the Career Center. They have helped me uh, write a professional resume, as well as uh, a cover letter, and even a personal statement for all the research and internship positions that have applied in my time here. Um, Something else they have is uh, allowing students to connect with alumni, and uh, especially with their new uh, system called Meliora Collective. So if students would want some advice or connection with alumni, that's, of, that's also something one can get through the Career Center. But making use of your connections and making use of your alumni connections that you might not know yet. Um, if you see someone on LinkedIn, who maybe has a connection to you or a connection to the university, it is totally fine to send them a message and say, hey, I'd like an intern to be your company. I see you're hiring. Would you have some time to talk with me about it? You know, they might not, but maybe they could forward you to someone who does. Um, and that's what alumni are here for. Um, I, I do this constantly, and I also ask other people for help. Taking advantage of the free tutoring we have on campus. So whether it be CSUG, um, I know they have great tutoring for CS, um, but also Seattle, no one really um, talks about the free tutoring that they have there. You can literally schedule one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, um, however many you want for whatever class that you have, and um, that has been one of the huge um, things in my life that has helped me to do well 
I love like the, the program. I got to know so many more people through like TAing and stuff. You you know, being in classes and you know, meeting your workshop leaders who are in the grades above you, and then you know, meeting with people in your grade as a TA, I think helps you make a lot of connections in the department as well. Our first year programs are primarily our current scholars program. Uh, so that initially connects with mostly first year, sometimes second or third year students, and helps them with their transition from high school to college. We do that in a variety of ways. We have a credit bearing seminar class called CAS 145, Navigating the Academy. So it helps people talk about some of the issues that they have in their transition, and it allows folks to kind of have a shared experience, because a lot of students, I think, who are first-gen, low-income students of color face a lot of the same issues. When we decided to start the STEM GEMS program to say anyone who wants to get an engineering or computer science degree can, they just need to be supported, and we then, uh, that was the purpose of the STEM GEMS program, is to develop the support systems for the students most at risk of not completing an engineering or computer science degree. Um, there's plenty of opportunity at the University of Rochester, and I'd highly recommend and encourage anybody who's interested to join. And actually, we have a list on our webpage that says, you know, here are ways in which to get your feet wet, get yourself introduced to the faculty members. If you're not taking courses with them, but you think you'll be interested in the kinds of things they're doing, then there are research meetings you can walk into and start to get, you know, familiar. And then we also have research programs for sophomores and juniors. We have our Ronald E. McNair Post-Baccalaureate Achievement Program. That's a nationally funded TRIO program. Um, that's for first-generation students, low-income students of color who are interested in pursuing a PhD. We also have our Xerox Engineering Research Fellows Program, which the purpose of that program is to provide a significant research experience to folks who are majoring in any of the major majors. If you are really interested in research, my biggest advice would be to talk to faculty like do not be afraid of the faculty they're all really nice um yeah i would talk to them especially talk to people who are working in areas that you're interested in but if you can go to your professional conference um or even you know a gender or or um, diversity conference you actually get to see a lot of people that look like you doing really cool things and it's really empowering. Um, the Grace Hopper Conference for Women in Technology is an international uh, conference spot sponsored by the Anita Borg Foundation. I mean, when you walk into that room and there's just thousands of people everywhere and people running around all over the place, it, it's unimaginable how huge it is. And also just, you know, the stress of having a bunch of interviews and normally, you know, you can space them out a little bit. It's all condensed into those three days. Um, and you're also trying to like go to all these talks and there's all these amazing speakers there and like cool tech demos and things. And Grace Hopper has one of my best experiences. Something I was able to get from that was an internship. After talking to, to a company, they decided to give me an interview. And given that I did really well in the interview, um, they decided to keep in touch with me after Grace Hopper. And through all the next steps that I was able to do for getting an internship, I was able to succeed and hence get uh, something for this summer. However, Grace Hopper is not only about um, internships and meeting companies, but it's also about being inspired and meeting amazing women. So me being a Latina and a Hispana, specifically from Mexico City, I was able to meet another person, another woman, who has been very successful in technology, very involved in computer science, who she was from this very close to my hometown within Mexico City. And for me, that was very inspiring and made me realize that there are other people like me who are doing computer science. And I, I found that I would succeed through working with students. And I, I figured, why not work with the women in my class? So I started organizing coding parties where, you know, just on a weekend, weeknight, weekend night, we just kind of get together, get pizza. Some would work on labs together if you're in the same class. Some would just play, play games, talk about things. And I think it just became this um, community where we could lean on each other for support. Because I had a different unconventional experience, I had to, I got the chance to do two years and then leave for two years and then come back for two years. Um, the second time around was a lot more meaningful because I had much more seriousness of purpose. 
I think when I was a freshman and sophomore, I was a little bit lost in what I wanted to do. However, when I came back, I had that goal, right? I wanted to combine computer science and studio art to do UX. And having that track and plan allowed me to really execute on my vision so that whenever I came across a decision, I got to say, okay, will this help me achieve my goal? If not, I'm not going to participate in it. But I got an internship at the Carnegie Mellon School of Computer Science in the Human Computer Interaction Institute. And that was the first place I was introduced to an entire field of study and practice around making sure that we don't just build great things, but we make sure that they actually work for people. And I loved how collaborative and smart and fun and creative the environment was, so I decided that was what I wanted to pursue for a career. You can always do a PhD. <laughs> so if you go to the industry and then want to come back to do your PhD, that's fine too. Uh, if somebody wants to do uh, just they know in their heart that, oh, I want to go for PhD. I would just, they should, can start that too. If you keep yourself updated, um, then it doesn't matter uh, if there is a gap or not. You can always switch between uh, jobs or anything. In, in life, if you don't like something, you can always switch.